morning, Dad. Hey, going for a run? Yeah, you should join me like you used to. Not with my old knees and back. Mm -mm. Try Xanthacin. It could really help. Plus, it's super safe, Dad, and it's good for your heart and brain. Xanthacin fights aging with astaxanthin, nature's most powerful antioxidant. And with three times the absorption and superior purity, it's the brand physicians trust. Find it at GetXantho.com and these retailers. Keep doing what you love with Xanthacin. All right, how's it going, everybody? It is episode 36 here on Hawaii Football Now, presented by Xanthison. Jordan Haley, along with Hunter Hughes, back with you as we open up our first episode of May. That's right, we are into May, uh, nearing graduation, nearing, you know, finals week for everybody on campus. Like, it is it is go time. It is the national championship week for the men's volleyball team. Uh, football is kind of hitting a different phase with, the deadline this past weekend of when you can enter the transfer portal and be eligible for the fall. Uh, there's a whole lot going on right now, even though we're as maybe far away from the college football season as you can kind of get, right? Sort of the in-between after last season and the start of next season, uh, but no shortage of topics for us here on HFN. And we are grateful for that as we record this Wednesday morning, May 4th at 7 a.m., Big mahalo to our other sponsors, Spectrum Mobile and Hawaii USA FCU as well. This will be released midday tomorrow, May 5th. Happy Boys Day to all of those out there as well. 5-5. Five, five. Uh, quick little opening drive here, Hunter. Uh, big mahalo to last week's guest, inside linebacker coach Chris Brown. The Damian grad has made his way back home, former University of Hawaii all-conference performer on the defensive side of the ball at multiple positions. The dude was a stud. Uh, he's still a stud, uh, and after a number of years coaching uh, up at Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas, he is part of Coach Timmy Chang's staff. Uh, that was a fun conversation. Uh, I know you and I, in, in sort of debriefing, really enjoyed it. Uh, it sounds like through feedback, just running into people, as well as the folks that were kind enough to drop us a line, you know, on social media, on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, they kind of enjoyed that one too, and, and I think it's hard not to be... Um, taken with coach brown right you, you hear from him you talk story with him it's like okay yeah let's go right Let, let's just, let's play some football let's let's get the helmet and shoulder pads on let's get to work um and, and just kind of curious uh you know if you had any further reaction to coach brown as we sort of tie a bow on last week yeah i mean first of all he's just such a genuine and good guy yeah. um at first uh first impressions whenever you see him you're like oh my goodness who let the hulk out here on the field but uh <laughs> then when you this is the first time i've actually gotten to uh, speak to him and, and i kind of get to know him a little bit more i mean the epitome of a giant teddy bear in, in my opinion <laughs> i'm sure uh, that that goes uh, without saying i would not want to get hit by him still um but uh just a really great dude great heart for our guys um, just more evidence that Coach Chang continues to round out um, this coaching staff and put our program in the right direction. I mean, it, it, was, it was great talking with that guy. Yeah, it really was. And I'm with you there, right? The, the, the local connection, uh, a guy who not only played at the University of Hawaii, is an alum, has sort of gone through the ringer uh, and, and speaks from firsthand experience while he coaches his guys up, but a, but a local guy as well, right? The uh, Damien product grew up on the windward side of Oahu. Like there, there are a lot of, a lot of roots that he still has here. <clears throat> Even if, uh, you know, the freeways are a little more congested than his commute back yeah. up uh, on the ninth Island, uh, as he sort of jokingly lamented with us on last week's episode. So if you didn't get a chance to listen to episode 35 last week, our final of April, be sure to do that. Even if you just listen to the co the portion with coach Brown, uh, a lot of fun for us there. All right, sort of transitioning into our game time here. Uh, a couple of different sort of themes that we're going to focus on here today, right? Uh, a lot of the folks, um, alums that are looking to continue their career at the professional level, we'll get into that. No University of Hawaii players drafted in the NFL draft, uh, but there were some taken in the CFL draft over the last couple of days that sort of usually follows up the NFL draft. Uh, we'll get into that. And then as well as some players coming into the program. Uh, including a fairly exciting transfer quarterback uh, from an ACC school coming in. Uh, and, and we'll get to that in a second as well. 
But Hunter, kind of wanted to start, you know, where we spent a bit of time last week uh, on the pod as well, talking about the pro prospects for the University of Hawaii, guys looking to get their name called perhaps during the NFL draft. Never came uh, for any of the University of Hawaii products, uh, but a few of the recognizable names getting a shot, uh, signing some undrafted free agent deals in the NFL, uh, invite, uh, accepting some some rookie minicamp invites. And I guess we can start there with Calvin Turner Jr., right? He seemed like the the sole guy who had a chance to get drafted. And as the, the draft went on, once you get into the mid, late sixth round, into the seventh round, it's it's almost better to just not get drafted. And yeah. that way you can you can kind of, pick and I think that's what's working out here right and it was kind of interesting because a few of the other names Hawaii guys um, were linked to teams undrafted deals and, and it took you know more than a day for Calvin Turner and the news to come out on on where he was headed and I was a little surprised I was like hey this is kind of odd right you, you figure he'd be one of the first guys uh, the teams would be on the phone to amongst the undrafted free agents uh, trying to secure him and I and I, it, it seems like um you know, he may have strategically went about this because the report is that he has accepted rookie camp invites with both the Baltimore Ravens and the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, and I think some folks out there are going to be like, you can go to two, right? And you can kind of accept as many as you want, as long as you can get to these places, right? And so none of these deals are guaranteed. I mean, this is, this is just, hey, you, you sign on a piece of paper that says, hey, I'll be at minicamp in a couple right. of weeks, right? And for, for rookie deals, rookie minicamps, like it's just rookies, you know, that it's like a weekend, you go to location, you go to the practice facility and you get like three days of work in and it's really like helmets uh, and jerseys. And that's about it. And, and just familiar with guys who have gone through the process. And so, you know, you're not, you're not necessarily signing a deal. You go to the rookie camp, you try and parlay that into a contract. You try and parlay that into another opportunity. Uh, and I think kind of shrewd, perhaps Calvin Turner waiting a little bit. Uh, and I got to say, man, two teams that, I kind of like how he would fit if he were indeed to land with either Baltimore or San Francisco. But what would you make of uh, Calvin's sort of path over this past weekend? Yeah, I mean, very intriguing. I was with you when, you know, news came in about Gene uh, prior. Uh, he was kind of the first one, um, at least in terms of like time frame that the news kind of came out that he got an opportunity. And I was so stoked for him. Gene's a, Gene's a great guy, but um yeah, I was like, okay, what's going on with Calvin? Because uh, without a doubt, I knew he was going to get some sort of opportunity um, with uh, some teams. And yeah, it seems to be a very um, strategic move on his part to accept a couple of rookie camp invites and just see if he, you know, I, I can't speak for him, but if I was in his shoes, see if you strike a, a better chord with a, coaching staff um, uh, scheme. I particularly think about the Ravens right now with the release or the trade of Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown going over to the Cardinals. Um, Turner being kind of that flex um, athletic guy in the slot uh, could offer, you know, some versatility. And again, that's that that's quite a leap. I understand, you know, him making that's assuming he makes not only the starting roster, but is in the starting rotation of receivers, but uh, it just shows that there is opportunity out there. And same thing with the 49ers. Um, they're still toiling with the fact of getting rid of uh, Debo Samuel. So um, again, that's also quite a leap to say that Calvin's on the same level as these guys, but I don't know, I'm rooting for him and uh, to see, positions opening up and uh, other opportunities out there it gets me excited for him yeah that was my um that was sort of my joke to my 49er fan friends who are also yeah. Hawaii football fans right it's like they might as well just trade Debo now right yeah. he got, got the replacement got and he's gonna be yeah. a lot cheaper <laughs> you know <laughs> um <laughs> when you're an undrafted free agent uh you know rookie deal something like that it's like what Calvin Turner can run the football Calvin Turner can catch the football yeah he Debo uh, and sort of that was the joke to, to all my Niner fan friends. But it is kind of intriguing because for a lot of the reasons that you point out, right? Like he is as versatile a prospect. I'm not saying that he is necessarily better than some of these other guys that are coming out at any one particular thing. But his versatility, you know, and his experience playing quarterback, 
the smarts that come with that, the understanding of the game that comes with that, his experience playing running back, his experience catching the football as a receiver, his experience as a return guy. Um, he can do so many things for you. He's a guy that can play special teams. Maybe he's a guy that goes down and cover kicks and he plays situationally. But the, the 49ers, like they value that versatility. I mean, just, you know, Devo Samuel is obviously the, the um, you know, the, the poster child, the poster child for that. Yeah, he's the clear cut yeah. example, right? But I mean, you just look at the way that deploy, you know, guys like George Kittle or Kyle Juszczyk and, and some of these other guys. And I know they're different body types and they play different positions, but they move guys all over, man. And, and cool. Kyle Shanahan values that. Um, and I, and, and I am value hopeful. of a, you know, the, the value of a rookie, whenever you mm-hmm. come in, they're looking to you, um, you know, if, you know, these guys that are undrafted free agents, they look to you somewhat like a walk on at the college level where they're trying to see, um, not only that you can play your position, but that you can do a lot, a lot of things for them. You know, that 52 man roster that they get it down to on game day, a lot of guys are doing multiple things. Um, and so someone in Calvin's, you know, situation, not only would, would be a receiver, um, depending on their situation, might even bring them in there for some sort of a jet sweep, you know, running option, special teams on probably punt, punt return, kickoff, kick return. I mean, the, the dude might be involved in five or six personnel groups. And that's just what happens um, at the next level if you're an undrafted rookie. And so I think Calvin fits the bill there better than a lot of incoming prospects. Yep. I, I'm with you, right? That that fourth, fifth receiver, that that third running back on the roster that, that maybe isn't going to see a lot of offensive snaps, but exactly. can do so much. And, and yeah, I think the hope is that he goes to rookie camp. He he impresses, gets invited back to somebody's, you know, full mini camp um, and, and, and takes it and runs from there. Right. And even even the Baltimore Ravens, like you, you mentioned, personnel groupings. My goodness, what they do offensively. Right. And yeah. and, and how they run the football like he they. They are unafraid to go deep into the depth chart when it comes to, to running the football and getting skill guys out there. Um, and I think I think Calvin could could fit in, right? I mean, Baltimore's throwing out running backs that, that you never even heard of uh, yeah. over the last few years with Lamar Jackson out there, the, the way that they have committed to that offense with, you know, the former MVP. And so, hey, you know, I, I think it's it's pretty – pretty smart i think it's pretty cool that he's invited multiple or he's been able to accept multiple invites to to rookie camps um and and sort of not everybody give himself yeah i i I wasn't super familiar with the idea i know guys who had sort of done it um but i i I always thought it was kind of more out of um necessity right it didn't okay i didn't latch on to one place i gotta go try someplace else right as opposed to like i'm gonna go to two places and see which one likes me the best or which one I can kind of parlay the best. I, you know, I, I, I'm not a, intimately aware as to, to how those negotiations work, but yeah, uh, you know, guys that, that I've known that have sort of bounced around at, at different rookie camps, it was always sort of like, you know, he had to, <laughs> as opposed yeah. to, as opposed to he was seeking it out. So yeah, I think this is, this is pretty cool for Calvin and, and, you know, it's on opposite coasts, uh, but if he can yeah. make it work, he can make it work. And, and I just, I think of the 32 teams, like it's hard to think of two better franchises in their current makeup with what they, what they do, what their coaches like to do uh, from a scheme standpoint that, that kind of fit Calvin Turner. Like it, it makes a lot of sense. For our bears, Jordan, he's too versatile. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got, we got new guys out there, right? Uh, the bears got a new staff. I, I would have loved for him to, to end up someplace like that, right? He's Tyree Cohen esque. Yeah. Uh, although they, you know, they they, they got to find some agree. for Justin Fields. Uh, you mentioned Gene Pryor, offensive lineman, right? Signing the undrafted free agent deal with the Chiefs. Uh, similar type of situations for uh, a couple of DBs: the corner Cortez Davis with the Broncos, and then Eugene Ford with the Jaguars. Uh, so basically, four guys, you know, coming off of the, the last couple of years for the University of Hawaii, getting shots in the NFL and um, some of the names that we expected. Uh, I have yet to see uh, Jared Smart's name pop up uh, anywhere. And, and if, if he has in the last, you know, 12 hours or so, I probably missed that. Uh, Chima Azuna, Pizza Tonga, some of the other guys that we thought may have a chance to, to latch on in one of these rookie camp type of situations or something like that. Uh, not to say that it's not too late, but we'll see 
what the future holds for those guys. But uh, uh, I know you mentioned Gene. Any thoughts on uh, Cortez and, and Eugene uh, as as they'll get a chance to to go compete? You know, you got to at least put the the colors on, the helmet on, and, and get a little NFL experience. Yeah, you know, um, Eugene Ford uh, is one of the remaining guys, uh, at least this last year, that was one of my teammates. I uh, was there whenever he came in, and so um, super uh, stoked uh, for him. And, uh, you know, his was kind of unique. It kept saying uh, they agreed to terms on uh, all the stuff on social media. So um, last time I spoke with him was actually at the spring game. He was out here and uh, said he was talking with a lot of teams that showed a lot of interest. And so um, with that, you can kind of use what other teams have, you know, sort of offered you as leverage in your main offer that you're going after. And so um, I bring that up just as I, I don't know the necessarily uh, the, spe the specifics, Jordan, but um, potentially more than just a mini camp maybe that might even guarantee him a spot uh at fall camp uh to try to compete for uh that 52 man roster so um the 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 specific line about agree to terms uh kind of perked my interest yeah and, and so the, you know again a lot of times in the nfl those those terms are like uh, written on toilet paper right like uh, yeah they can they can get rid of you pretty quickly and and especially for guys uh, with the leverage of undrafted free agents but uh, that's a path that that people have found right to the nfl like it, it, it's not unheard of um and you can if you can latch on in the right situation and and prove your worth and, and versatility obviously helps as as hunter has pointed out that could be uh, that could be big and then other opportunities right north of the border elsewhere uh, the Canadian Football League, you had uh, Cole Leval, the offensive lineman, big Cole, uh, right. signed with the BC Lions of the CFL. So he'll be uh, heading to Vancouver. Of course, Hawaii football players have had a lot of success uh, playing for the BC Lions, right? You think of Solomon Elamimian, um, the first defensive player to win basically the equivalent of the MVP in the CFL uh, a few years ago, first in like decades or something like that it was something ridiculous Solomon's such a great guy uh and has really found a home there in Vancouver mm -hmm. um and then Ryan Meskel former kicker for the University of Hawaii right a couple of years removed coming off of I believe knee surgery if it was I know he was hurt for a little bit but he's healthy now and and booming kicks and had a really efficient career uh during his time at the University of Hawaii the Australian uh has signed with the Edmonton Elks of the CFL uh as they uh went through their draft process uh mesco being picked up there and and, and cole Leval as well uh so pretty cool opportunities for these guys you know and the, the rules are a little different right when it comes to to foreign players and and you got to make sure you got enough uh you know canadian nationals and so the, the there are x amount of roster spots for some of these overseas guys whether americans or in mesco's place international guys from outside the americas mm -hmm. uh but but pretty cool opportunities and, and you know, especially for Cole, I think he's a guy that can play like he, he's a guy with the size, like he checks all the boxes, the smarts of having played multiple positions on the line, having played center. Um, like I just I, I kind of like the fit. I think the CFL makes a lot of sense for him. Um, mm -hmm. And and, you know, Vancouver's a, a, a great spot. It's a great city. Uh, and as we mentioned, you know, there's there's been some Hawaii ties there with the Elamimians and, and some others. So, yeah, I really like it. And of course, if if Mesco is healthy and, and he's, you know, being consistent, like, you know, if you can kick the football up north in that weather uh, in Edmonton, of all places as well, like it, it, it ain't no easy task. So, yeah. you know, if, if he can do that, he can he can make a career for himself up there. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about these two guys and, and their opportunities yeah. up in Canada. Yeah, I'm actually playing golf with Mescal on Thursday. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, en route from Aussie, you know, back this direction uh, currently as the Canadian uh, League sort of starts uh, fairly soon uh, with their season being in the summer because it's so stinking cold up there uh, in the fall and the winter. But uh, super stoked for him and obviously cold as well. And it's kind of a shift of mindset um for these guys because they're so used to being the dude whenever they're here at, at uh of you know they're they're the starter they're the go-to guy of their position and so 
if you don't get an opportunity to the NFL, it's kind of this mental transition that these guys sort of have to have of, okay, I didn't really get my shot there. Do I go for an undrafted free agent and kind of, you know, pay my dues at the NFL that way or go to Canada and yeah, it may not be NFL, but it's still top tier football. And a lot of chances you're getting paid pretty, pretty well too up there, you know, as well. So it, it's, kind of a shift of um of uh, priorities shift of focus and i mean in, in my mind uh go for it it's a tremendous opportunity and so many guys have killed it up at um canada and then gotten an opportunity later down the road down in the nfl so um stoked for these guys at kind of exploring other opportunities yeah same same here i i think it's it's really cool to see you know guys take their chances in different opportunities because I think at the end of the day for the University of Hawaii right yeah you want as many of your guys to get into the NFL like that's the pinnacle I, I, you know nobody's nobody's trying to to downplay the significance of getting a shot in the National Football League um, but the more alums that you can point to that are playing professional football whatever that looks like and especially right. in the CFL because I'm with you right I mean the, the CFL's and its history is you know 120 years old or whatever it is now far older than the national football league but just putting these guys in position to go make a living playing football like a full-time living um it, it only reflects positively on your program it only helps with recruiting it it, it, it is just positivity for for the university of hawaii football program the more guys that can latch on the more guys that hawaii can point to it like hey man you come here there's a good chance that, that you can go get into a mini camp that you can go play in the, in Canada and, and make a name for yourself up there. Like it's, it's, it's good stuff. And yeah, you, you hope that the university of Hawaii gets to the point where they're getting guys drafted regularly again. Um, and, and that is the hope for sure. But uh, all things considered pretty darn good showing uh, for these guys as they're going to go get their opportunity here coming up and, you know, for, for a recruiting standpoint, as, as these guys point to it, right. That um, it's, it's, it's important. It really is because you, you're looking at schools elsewhere in the conference, right. That are getting guys drafted that are putting guys into the league. Like you got to be able to, to show that, that Hawaii is an option to go totally you know, into the next level. It's kind of a unique thing where it's not so much if you're a player or not, but if you're a part of a good team, I mean, look at how many guys got drafted from Cincinnati this last year. They're another group of five school, which, you know, a few years ago, they were just kind of a middle of the pack group of five. They were not getting near the draft opportunities as they are right now because of the success as the team. And so, you know, for those listening at home, like, yeah, how do we get to that level of getting guys consistently drafted out of UH? We got to win games. It's not just having standout prospects, although that can help. And the NFL will find talent if talent is there. It has everything to do with, can you play in a system? Can you be a part of a winning program? Um, I mean, I can even remember in the chow days, we had some significantly good football players that were on some really bad teams. <laughs> and so because of that, the opportunities weren't quite um, free pickings. Um, I just thought that was uh, worth mentioning. Yeah, I, I think nine from Cincinnati got drafted this year, yeah, which is crazy. which is really impressive. Uh, you know, Georgia had fifteen uh, to, to set the the seven round draft record. Pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, it, it's a big part of it. The the it goes hand in hand, right? You bring in better players, your team's going to do better. The profile raises; those players reap the benefit of of you know, maybe making it to the next level. It, it It's all sort of cyclical in, in how that goes. And, and you hope that, you know, the University of Hawaii is building that back up again with some of these guys, including, I think a lot of people are hopeful at quarterback. And that is something that we're going to get into here after we take a quick halftime break. Uh, pit transfer, Joe Yellen on his way to the University of Hawaii with a chance to play right away and a chance to play for a while. If he is indeed the answer going forward, we'll get into that and a little bit more when we return here to Hawaii football now. But before we head out for our little mid-episode break, we got to tell you about this amazing supplement called Astaxanthin. Doctors and pharmacists recommend it for everything from joint and muscle function to cholesterol health and cognitive function, even anti-aging. 
But did you know only one brand delivers three times more astaxanthin to your body, making it a better buy than the competition? Introducing Xanthacin, available at GetXantho.com, Newtown Square Pharmacy, Down to Earth, Kaka Anko, GNC stores, statewide, and Pharmacare Hawaii as well. Learn more at GetXantho.com. All right, second half coming up. This is Hawaii Football Now from ESPN Honolulu. All right, second half time here on Hawaii Football Now. It is episode 36. Jordan and Hunter along with you. HFN presented by Xanthasin as well as Spectrum Mobile and Hawaii USA FCU. A lot of talk about some of the Bulls looking to continue their careers in the pros in the first half of this episode. Second half, guys on their way in. And of course, the headline just within the last couple of days, sort of right at the deadline, May 1st was the deadline to get your name in the transfer portal. So you can play potentially with eligibility this coming fall. Of course, Pitt was really in the news because of Jordan Addison, the wide receiver who had reportedly was on his way out and then wasn't on his way out. There was reports of USC meddling when he wasn't already in the portal. You're not supposed to touch guys. You're not supposed to recruit guys if they're not in the portal. A whole mess there. And sort of under the radar was backup quarterback Joey Yellen, um, who I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, okay, what's the big deal here, right? And he was the backup, obviously, to Kenny Pickett, who was the lone quarterback drafted in the first round this year. He sat for a couple of years behind Pickett, uh, played one year at Arizona State, started a game while at Arizona State, and played pretty well. Uh, And we'll get into that in just a second. He's a former four-star quarterback out of Mission Viejo, uh, that powerhouse down in Southern California, right? Bob Johnson, his sons, Rob Johnson, uh, among them have, have... built that program over the decades have come through that program uh and they produce they produce talent they produce division one talent they produce division one quarterback talent as well he has three years of eligibility left he i'm not sure if it's official official yet but he will likely be immediately eligible as a grad transfer as a second time transfer he just needs to get a release basically by pit and it sounds like that was um you know sort of told to him that that would be coming uh so again he's got a fair amount of eligibility left and a potential to play right away um and he is a guy that look sometimes you get these cast off quarterbacks right that that are highly ranked out of high school didn't work out maybe didn't quite develop the way that people had projected and they find themselves on their way to to lower division programs or, or group of five schools or something like that and and it never sort of comes to fruition the hope here is though with Yellen that he has actually shown a little bit he made one start at Arizona State, threw for four touchdowns against USC, uh, a couple, you know, three years ago. Uh, went for 292 in that game, uh, and if it's out there, right, the highlights are out there on the interwebs. Um, you can see the talent, like you can see the talent, right? He's got an RPO background. Uh, he's got a nice compact motion, a good touch on the deep ball, and so this isn't 100% projection based off like high school tape from five years ago. Um, there's a little bit out there at a very high level competing against USC a few years ago where you're like, oh, it's one start, but it's at least film and it's at least experience at a Pac-12 level. And it's like, okay, this guy might have a little something. Uh, and of course, you got other guys that have transferred in, right? Like Cam Cooper, um, the, the Washington State transfer. I would say the big difference is Cooper never really played much at Washington State. I think he had like, what, 21 pass attempts or something like that. Um, and you know, no knock on him, but the the difference with Yellen is, is he's got some, some tangible experience. Um, and he's coming in, I would imagine with the mindset of, Hey, I'm going to go win that job. And I get it. There's Braden Shager. There's Armani Ed, and there's other guys with talent, you know, out here, Jake Farrell, we saw a bit of that in the spring game. Uh, but never hurts to have healthy competition. And I think Yellen now makes this competition really 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 interesting because of his background and his pedigree but what did you make of the news hunter yeah uh i had kind of heard murmurings uh that they were going to go after you know whatever big name guy in the transfer portal whatever that means uh because that's that's all relative uh to be quite honest with you jordan um i mean he shared the uh, the QB room with Kenny Pickett, who, as you said, is uh, the lone guy to be taken in the first round um, this uh, this past NFL draft. And so um, with that just comes, um, you can kind of rub off 
of each other, uh, that there's a, a higher level of competition because of that. Um, your eyes are trained differently as a quarterback when you're seeing um, NFL talent right next to you, how he's making decisions, throws, timing, all of that comes into play. Um, and then not only, um, you know, not only that, but he's played at some various places. I mean, it's pretty um, diverse set of uh, colleges that he's played for. I mean, Arizona State and then Pitt and now Hawaii. He's a pretty well-traveled uh, college football player, if you ask me. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and then looking at his film, uh, real confident in the pocket, uh, throws a really just solid uh, football in the air. Um, yeah, throughout the spring, we had talked about on the show that no one had really stood out from our practices or felt like they won the job and I think that sentiment was felt by this coaching staff in them going after someone like this because it's new coaching staff brand new offensive scheme so many things are still yet to be created decided and proven on the field someone like Joey Yellen who is proven uh, in some aspects not a ton but you know definitely proven at the division one and um, power five level gives some sort of a um, I guess you would say comfort to a coaching staff that is new still trying to put the pieces together of okay this guy perfectly can hang on to the football do what we're asking him to do and uh, kind of help us get this thing in motion as we begin this Timmy Chang era yeah it's it's a model that hasn't necessarily been the path forward for the University of Hawaii, right? The, the the big power five transfer. Like there's guys that have come in and, and played and had varying degrees of success. Uh, you know, I guess you could kind of count Colt Brennan as one of those, right? From his his real brief stint at, at Colorado and then via junior college. But I think of him more as, a, as sort of a JC transfer, right? Oh, and and Rolo was a JC transfer, played very well. Like that, that was always something that, that June Jones was able to sort of unearth. Norm Chow turned Chow, a little Chow, bit. Schroeder. Sean yeah. Schroeder right out of Duke, uh, yeah. Taylor Graham out of Graham. out of Ohio State, right? Um, did we get a USC guy at one point too? Yeah, Max Wittick. Max Wittick, thank you. I, took I, my I roster could... spot, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, man, I was racking my brain trying to remember who yeah. the the UFC uh, USC guy was, but yeah, Wittick. And so, right, like it, it varying degrees of success. Like those 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 guys all, you know, contributed in some form or fashion. I think especially Schroeder, like I, I kind of liked Schroeder a lot and, and he was yeah, pretty Sean's and maybe, it, you know, and, and it, but it was, it didn't equate to a ton of wins. Right. And, and then I guess that was sort of the norm era, but you know, with Rolo, right. It was a lot of Cole McDonald and, and, and Chevin Cordero, right. Like high school recruits um, and oh, Braden wow. Shager, same thing, right. That, that has started significant games here over the last handful of years. And so the, the big power five transfer, like that really hasn't been the recipe for the University of Hawaii. So I'm that that's why I'm a little more intrigued because this is different, right? It, it really is um, just track record. And I get it. Like I, I we, we just went through the history of like four coaching regimes, um, you know, for, for prior to this. It, it, and even under McMackin, right? You think of Greg Alexander, other guys, right? JC guys that yeah. came in. Bryant Moniz, um, another one that was sort of a vagabond, found his way home. Welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so somebody of this ilk, like four, like we don't get four star quarterbacks. Like that's, that's not something that, that happens all the time. And then you got, you know, basically a couple like Cam Cooper was a really high recruit coming out of high school. And again, different, I think experiences so far with the power five programs and, and sort of how they've gotten to the university of Hawaii. And I would say Yellen has the, the better resume. I think that that's no knock on Cooper. Uh, but just of all the guys that have transferred in here as of as of late, like Yellen's the most impressive on paper, and because of that on film, as you get to see him play, and so, yeah, I'm really intrigued uh, because as you pointed out, right, even even with Shager's experience, uh, even with with Farrell's sort of arm talent and and his experience at least within the program, um, this is a really interesting twist to the competition, and and if he is indeed immediately eligible. Not only that, but the possibility of having him be the starter long term. Like this isn't a, this this isn't a stopgap answer. Like he is in a 
grad transfer with one year of eligibility to play. Like he could be the starter for multiple years if he indeed wins out. And look, guys like Shager and others, like that's the that's also on the table for them, right? If if they emerge and become the guy, but this yeah. is this isn't just a short term option. Like it could be a young long term option if if Joey Yellen is indeed the answer at quarterback. And I th- I think that all of those things combined make this something that that everybody sort of perked up when it when he announced you know and it came out that that he was leaving Pitt to come to Hawaii like that's that's a yeah. that's a really big shift you know obviously he's a West Coast guy obviously he spent some time in the Pac-12 at Arizona State but you know at Pitt their offensive coordinator leaves right Mark Whipple he's off to Nebraska so there is some change there and and I think that played a but a pick it left role. too yeah you know? and, and <clears throat> exactly and so you you figured he may have been in line and, and maybe that's um, something that, that you can make the case where it's like, okay, why is he leaving? Right. That, that may lead you to scratch it. It's like, Hey, is he not the guy? But you know, maybe it's because the, the, the offensive coordinator is leaving that, that OC is bringing in their guy. Right. And, and you know how the musical chairs sort of roll and then the dominoes fall. Um, but I'm, I'm telling you, and, and I think we do a decent job here of not trying to, or at least trying to avoid hyperbole. You know, I don't, I don't think we, we delve into that too much. Um, and I'm not saying that Jer- Joey Yellen is going to be the next great Hawaii quarterback, but you go watch that Ar- Arizona State USC game. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> this this guy's this guy's got some talent. He's guys got, this guy's got a little bit of the stuff. And again, it was one game. They were down big early in that USC game, and so they had to throw it a ton, um, and maybe took a little of the pressure off, but. Look, talent-wise, it's hard to deny that th- this guy is as talented as anybody within the conference, right? I mean, coming in, he's as yeah. talented as anybody on the roster, um, and it's a it's a matter of whether that talent comes through and he can piece it together. So, I am for one quite optimistic. Uh, yes. Again, trying to avoid the hyperbole, but I am quite optimistic that Joey Yellen will have something to say about the season uh, once we get into the fall. Yelly, Yelly, Yellen. We got to come up with uh, kind of a, a fun nickname for him, but uh, yeah, it just gives us options. Um, I yeah. good point. was worried looking at the spring game uh, where we were at with the quarterback position. Um, yeah. Like guys have been putting work in, but are we going to be ready for Vanderbilt whenever they come here in August? Uh, that's not that far away. And if we were feeling that, I know the coaching staff was feeling that too. So um joey just gives us versatility gives us some options and uh uh, we've got a little bit of a receiver core being uh, developed right now too so um we need someone to be able to deliver the ball to him so i'm excited too and kudos to the coaching staff for for Mm -hmm. staying on the portal staying on the recruiting trail uh you know the coaches that we've talked to have said you know it's a year-round thing right and and kudos to them to going out and landing yelling uh, maybe all right. the most so, active oh, sorry, go ahead. season. I was just saying, maybe one of the most active off seasons. Yeah, seriously. In my recollection, uh, uh, in terms of acquisitions, people leaving. Obviously, this is the era of transfer portal, so it just allows for that. It's kind of the uh, the temperature in the water, mm-hmm. if you will. But uh, man, there, it seems like uh, in the last three to four months, Jordan, we've had something every every week, if not yeah. every you know, a couple times a week. I got to imagine it'll probably continue on, right? And sort of on that note, there are a couple of other personnel notes, if you will. Um, Zaren Crockett, a running back, strong safety out of Hercules High School in California, sort of tweeted out that, that he was committing to the University of Hawaii. It doesn't sound like it's a scholarship opportunity, just sort of putting together context clues and things like that. Uh, he was a really productive high school running back, as well as a two-way player, maybe like a preferred walk-on type thing. He's not a highly recruited guy um, at the division one level, some lower level offers uh, six foot one ninety. He's super smart. He's got a 4.33 GPA. Um, but you know, so they're, they're sort of start, start trying to round out some of the things, right? You need walk-ons, right? You, you only got 85 scholarships uh, to round this out. So it, you know, just a name to, to keep your eye on. I don't know exactly what that's going to, you know, turn out to, but, but sort of on that note, as you were pointing out, Wyland Free, who was a Fresno State grad transfer defensive back, you know, back in March, it was reported that he was heading to Hawaii. And just to show you how all of these things kind of change, right? The, the word was that he was going to be joining during the summer after the spring semester. Uh, well, on Sunday, it was announced that he's actually heading to Georgia Southern. 
Uh, so he's not coming to Hawaii anymore. Um, you know, and I don't know how strong that was, you know, a couple of months ago, but it, it's funny how these things change, right? Uh, that was a guy who was originally a verbal to USC in high school when Clay Helton was the head coach back in 2017. Um, Elton now, of course, over at Georgia Southern. So some pre-existing relationships there, but as you know, it, it just kind of goes to show like it would have been nice. I, I think Free's a good player, but you know, it just kind of goes to show that these things, these things change so quickly. Yes. Uh, and until you get the guy on campus, until he is enrolled, until the scholarship is signed uh, for some of these guys, like it could change. <laughs> it, could, oh. it could change before the season and and who knows exactly how it all plays out. So, so yeah, um, if anybody, I don't know, you know, if anybody was counting on Wyland free to be there and, and whatnot, doesn't sound like it's happening uh, anymore for the university of Hawaii. One last quick note on sort of recruiting and where this goes. Um, you got a, a kid with some strong local ties who is another four star, a safety 2023. So he's still got a year of high school left in Cody DeCambra. Uh, up at Bishop Gorman, who announced his top six. And in that top six is Oregon, Washington, Oregon State, Arizona, Colorado, Pac-12, right? I mean, this, that's the caliber of this guy. And Hawaii. Hawaii is, is, is in the top six. And, of course, you remember Chris Brown was the Gorman D.C. the last couple of years and was on staff for the last, what, seven years or whatever it is. Um, a lot of ties there. And Gorman, you know, maybe not winning national championships every year now, um, but they're still – perennially top 25 in the country and still pumping out a ton of high level division one talent. And if Hawaii can keep that pipeline going, especially with coach Brown's, you know, ties there, that's big. And again, you know, we talked about some of these other guys, right? Uh, you had the, uh, the offensive lineman uh, a few weeks ago, Polynesian kid, you know, out of the Southwest where it's like, Hey, is, I forget if it was top 10 or what, but Hawaii was in the mix, right? And it's like, is he coming here? Probably not. Uh, and I know we've, we haven't quite gotten to yet. And I, I think this is a conversation that, that we can have maybe during the summer. But, you know, Nika, uh, Nico Iamaleava, the, the quarterback from Cal, or Long Beach Poly that is yeah. committed to, to Tennessee. Yes. Like, he, he came on an unofficial visit. Like, just, just having Hawaii mentioned, you know, by some of these guys. And maybe the camera ends up coming. I don't know. I think there's a decent chance. Uh, he's at least strongly considering it's sort of not necessarily like, um, you know, like Tua was smart, right? He had Hawaii in his top whatever every time he cut it down, like even though I think we all knew like he was going to Bama or USC or Oregon or something like that. But he always included Hawaii, which I think was, you know, always really cool. Uh, but to just have Hawaii pop up, right, just to have the logo like shared all these times on Twitter by all the recruiting services, by all the big recruiting analysts, like even if these guys don't come, even if you only hit at a very small percentage, which is honestly the reality anyway, when you're talking about going up and recruiting get braces against Oregon and Washington. Um, it's just, it's just good. Like it's just good for the program, right? Just to have these guys say, Hey man, this is my final six. And you got all these logos. And then there's the, the, the green H there. Right. And, and obviously with guys like the camera, who's, you know, of Hawaiian ancestry, who um, family here and, and, and has time in Hawaii like that, that, that only goes to help, no doubt about it. But the bigger conversation to that of, of having these guys at least consider and to have Hawaii included, you know, when these reports go out, right, and 24-7 sports is out there, you know, writing little articles on it and things like that, and, and Hawaii's mentioned. That's right. It's 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 only good. It's only good. And, and you know, hopefully the camera decides, why not play come, come home and play here? Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the kid will make the decision that's best for him, no doubt about it, but it, it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. It further validates the point that you and I have shared that if Hawaii can get the product, right, if we can get the feel of our program, the offerings, the, um, uh, positioning of our university and how we are portrayed at the national level, we can compete there are certain intangibles that Hawaii has that a lot of places do not have. Yeah, Nebraska might have a 100,000 seat stadium, but they don't got no palm trees in Nebraska, man. Um, there are certain things that Hawaii has to offer that we really can compete at the national level um, in terms of recruiting. And I think the next step for us, and hey, business owners listening right now, this is where we can get to that next level in this era of name, image, and likeness, 
where we are offering opportunities to up and coming athletes to partner with local businesses. Not only would that boost your sales, you know, I'm full on pitching right now, Jordan, but it would give UH that upper leg in being able to get guys like Nico Iamaleva as opportunities to come here and play because that's the, the new era right now is they are weighing name, image, and likeness opportunities against each other, depending on what school they want to go to. That's the next step for UH is figuring out how to land these contracts and then how to land these, these, um, these um, prospects in the same, in the very same breath. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we, we hear that right from, from fans. We hear that from, you know, guys that, that, that comment all the time, right? Like our, our guy, Al from VA, he, he's brought up the name image likeness thing a, a ton, right? And I think it's an interesting perspective from, from some of the guys who, you know, listen to the pod that live on the mainland, right? Because yeah. it, it's like they want to see involvement. They, they, they see the reach of the program beyond just Hawaii and, and the, the potential marketability of the program as well as individuals and the value in that, um, you know, that, that reaches far beyond just the, the shores of Hawaii, right? And, and I think that is, that is something that the University of Hawaii has to get right, right? The product, as you point out, is 100% what it boils down to because then everybody sort of prospers from it, right? The, Hawaii gets better recruits. These Huge. kids get better opportunities. They get compensated for their success, right? And, and their value on and off the field. And then we have um, better teams, and then you get better teams, right? You win more football games, you bring more revenue in. It is, it is symbiotic when it comes down to it. Um, no doubt about that. So as we sort of wrap up this latest episode of Hawaii football, now I want to give a shout out as well to, to all the listeners, guys dropping us a line as well. Um, our guy Larry on, on YouTube was saying Hunter needs to be coaching up some quarterbacks at the high school level. Uh, yeah, if Hunter's a busy man, I, I'm sure, uh, you know, he's, he's giving back in all sorts of ways. Oh man. Oh uh, yeah. We got, uh, we got our guy, uh, blessed child out here. No name, but, uh, you know, shout out. And then we got, uh, the champ show dropped us a line. The, uh, the long running, uh, OC 16 show champ dropping us a line. Uh, so shout out to champ. Go make sure to check out the champ show when you get that as well. Look, uh, Kavika on Facebook always. Uh, and then, uh, as we head into the overtime segment here, just to wrap up this episode, it is exciting times. The University of Hawaii men's volleyball team just romped in the in the quarterfinal round of the men's volleyball NCAA tournament yesterday against North Greenville. Uh, they played Ball State today. I guess this will be the, the episode will be released on Thursday, right? We record this on Wednesday, so technically tomorrow um, as we speak it into the future. But 4.30 p.m. again, Hawaii time Thursday, the 5th against Ball State. Uh, trying to get a little revenge against the Cardinals. They lost twice in the regular season. Ball State, by the way, coached by Donnie Cruz, a Baldwin graduate um, from here on Maui. Maui. Uh, so that'll be a pretty cool uh, little connection there. That'll be streamed on NCAA.com. Uh, cross our fingers that the stream is all good. It won't be on Spectrum. The NCAA takes over from the semifinals on. And then if Hawaii can make it to the championship game on Saturday, that'll be early afternoon Hawaii time in uh, ESPN television. We'll carry that. Um, the women's beach program, uh, made it to the NCAAs as an at-large, but lost in the opening round just this morning, um, Wednesday the 4th against LMU Loyola Marymount. Uh, so their championship run um, off to a rocky start there. Uh, I forget if it's double elimination or if it's just straight bracket now in, in the beach volleyball championships, but uh, you know, dropping to Loyola Marymount in their opener. Baseball's like up to second in the Big West after a big weekend dropping the opener, but then taking the next two to, to, to get the series win against Cal State Fullerton. There's a lot of excitement there. So yeah, a lot of excitement around campus, but of course uh, everybody, I think will be paying attention to the men's volleyball team, trying to defend that national championship. And I like their chances. They're playing as good as anybody right now. I honestly think is the three seed. They got a better draw than the two seed or the one seed than Long Beach State. The other semifinal is a massive Titan battle between Long Beach State and UCLA. So one of those two will knock each other out. Hawaii hopefully can have the upper hand against Ball State. That'll be fun to see. But um, any last thoughts, Hunter, as we wrap this thing up uh, on our uh, opening May episode, all the way up to 36 here? 
Yeah, uh, I got to throw uh, got to throw some some golf stuff in there. Uh, Tiger Woods making an appearance at Southern Hills. Uh, that, uh, of course, if you're listening, uh, that's where the PGA Championship is being held. Uh, the PGA moved up uh, a couple years ago from its kind of fall, late summer time slot to May. And so it's the lone major in May. Um, my family lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is where Southern Hills uh, Golf Club is. And so big news for us. I'm trying to get my, uh, my friends and family in that area to uh, put their houses up for Airbnb so uh, they can uh, sort of uh, make some money in, in the process of all of these big name golfers coming in because we know they've got the coin. Um, but uh, yeah, Tiger's going to at least uh, give it a shot. He hasn't ruled it out just yet, which uh, always gets me excited. Yeah, that's uh, it, the major rhythm, I think, is kind of they, they hit a nice sweet spot where they're moving the PG up a little bit and you don't I have agree. to wait quite as long uh, as, you know, between what, what was the Masters and then the U.S. Open. US I, Open. I like I like yeah. where it fits now. Um, and that should be a lot of fun. All right, Hunter, uh, always a pleasure to, to just kind of sit back and rap about UH football. And, you know, as you mentioned, there always seems to be something, even though we are deep into the offseason now. Um, next week, we're going to have a lot more to talk about. We'll, we'll see what sort of plays out, um, you know, who else may be coming via the portal or something like that. Uh, but there's always, always something to talk about when it comes to UH football. Big thanks to our guy, Jaron, on the controls as well as we – Head on out. Uh, again, this has been Hawaii Football Now, episode number 36, presented by Xanthus Inc. Big Mahalo to Spectrum Mobile, as well as Hawaii USA FCU. For Hunter, I'm Jordan. We'll see you next week, everybody. Aloha. You've been listening to Hawaii Football Now with Jordan Helley and Hunter Hughes, all from ESPN Honolulu.